event for this wonderful event. Uh, a lot of people, when they observe their anniversary, they go through a lot of things. Some go to the beach, they enjoy themselves and all that. But we have the event. We felt we are young. We have uh, obtained from the society and we felt that we need for us to give back to the society. Uh, so this IFR Jamboree is actually part of our CRPSR exercise. I think uh, for us to think about the society, once again, from the point I'm having right now, I would like us to appreciate the event once more, please. I think it is. We are the best for uh, appreciating us all. Um, I will take us briefly on what we call the overview of IFRS and its adoption in Nigeria. We've seen the, the reason to take a note from the system and we are thinking that, okay, the best time to mark or the best way to mark our two years anniversary of being in existence is actually to give back to the society. And part of what we are giving back to the society is to create an awareness of what we call the International Financial Reporting Standards. Create awareness, let people know about, let, let know the people's challenges about what they are facing in terms of converting to IFRS and also to create awareness about what we do as PML, um, uh, as in PML as a company. We are often wondering why IFRS? Why do we benefit from the regular income that we, have used, we are used to and we are moving to IFRS? What led to IFRS adoption in Nigeria? All this we actually will discuss and in the following slides that we will be having in the next 20 to 25 minutes. Exactly 28th of July 2010, the FEC, Federal Electric Council, had a meeting and signed into law that um, all companies in Nigeria registered must adopt IFRS. You may be wondering who are the members of FEC. FEC are actually all the ministries in Nigeria, the president being the chairman, PJ, and the vice president being the vice chairman. Also, uh, the Secretary of the State to the Government of the Federation and um, also a permanent secretary in the uh, SGL, that is the Secretary to the uh, Government of the Federation. Now, it was signed into law that effective 1 January 2012, all companies, certain companies in Nigeria must, certain companies in Nigeria must adopt or adopted IFRS. FRC, Financial Reporting Council, formerly MAFB, announced a three-phase implementation strategy. Now, the first phase is public interest entities, the second is other public interest entities, and the third is small and medium sized entities. Now, like I said earlier about the overview of IFRS, we need to understand what exactly is IFRS. What exactly are these standards that we are talking about? Now, what are accounting standards? They are commonly referred to as generally accepted accounting principles. This set of standards guidelines provide basis for the preparation of financial statements and the accountant must comply with them. They are just like laws to the accountant. Just the same way the lawyer carries the constitution to defend his case in the law in the, the court of law, also the accountants need to have the IFRS standards by sight whenever he's preparing the financial statements. All the items of the financial statements are actually treated or are returned to in IFRS or you know the standard that applicable to any position you are working in. What are we trying to say here? For every item, for instance, in a financial position, um, like it used to be called another, another end gap as balance sheet. Your PPE used to be called as um, fixed assets. The treatment of what you need to do, how you need to present it, is already in the, uh, in the standards called IFRS standards. So, at every point in time, accountants need to be addressed with the object of or the object in or the content of the IFRS standards. So at this point, the takeaway we also need to add here is that we need to ensure that we have the standards in our shelf, either in the office or at home. Because and also we also know that year in, year out, 
they are the capital and the regulators that um, deploy that oversee the um, writing of the standards are not sleeping, so they are updating the standards on a daily basis. And we as accountants, we need to keep abreast with everything with the up to date happening in the standard. Um, as accountants, you can go to their website and register. And whenever there are any updates, they will notify you of the updates. So that answers what accounting standards are. And, and also, we need to retreat here that that means you can have accounting standards across so many jurisdictions. Before the pronouncement of adoption of IFRF in Nigeria, we were using what we call the Nigerian GAP. So that means we were using accounting standards called the Nigerian GAP or SAS, Statement of Accounting Standards, then issued by the Nigerian Accounting Standards Board. So accounting standards is a broad thing. Now we now have what we call International Financial Reporting Standards and it's an accounting standard issued by the International Accounting Standards Board. The International Accounting Standards Board has a predecessor called the International Accounting Standards Committee. A typical example of the way it is in Nigeria is that prior to adoption of IFRS, we have what we call NASD, Nigeria Accounting Standards Board. Upon Adoption of IFRS, there is a new body that we call FRC, Financial Reporting Council. They are not different from one another. It's just that we have what we had what we call uh, NAFC, and now we have Financial Reporting Council. So the, our NAFC then, we were issuing what we call the Statement of Accounting Standards. So the same way we have it in this definition is that International Accounting Standards Board that is IFRS is a successor to International Accounting Standards Committee. Now, before adopting or adoption of IFRS, we are using what we call System of Accounting Standard, issued by Nigeria Accounting Standard Board. Now, International Accounting Standard Board was actually founded in 2001, like I said earlier, as a successor to International Accounting Standard Committee. And it's responsible for developing international, international financial reporting standards, a new name for international accounting standards, issued after 2001. What are we trying to explain here? If we are familiar with the I IFRS, we know we have IS1 to IS41. Do we all agree with me? We now have IFRS1 to IFRS13. 14 is in the pipeline also. It does not mean that because IAFD has come to succeed IAFC, mean IFRS 1 is replacing IAS 1. No. It means that after the takeover of uh, the board by IAFD, all the standards issued after IAS 41 will be referred to as IFRS. So that means IFRS 1 has done what we call first time adoption. IFRS 2 is dealing with um, share benefit payment and so on up to IFRS 13 where we have um, fair value measurement. After this, if you are adopting IFRS for the first time, three days are very important. Three crucial days are important. Um, the first one is what we refer to as transition date, the second one is the comparative date, and the last one is the first annual IFRS that we are preparing. I think about overview and